Right, we're already on to part four of this, uh, what is turning out to be a series of videos. I honestly thought when I started that I'd fit it all into one, but it's just going to be too, too damn long. Um, this one here is an idea I would like to see more people making videos about. Um, I already made one. The title I have here written down is I Don't Hate God. Um, and I made my own video and I called it provocatively um, because I, I, it did upset some people. Um, atheists do not hate God. Um, this obviously comes down to the um, misunderstanding which a lot of religious people seem to have where they make the claim that atheists hate God. Um, and then I mention the absurdity of of that uh, statement, you know, how can we hate something which we don't think exists? We might hate the concept of God, but actually hating an actual God, um, it's just daft. Another video title, something which I haven't made, I haven't put into a video yet, but it's something I've been tempted to a few times, is No More Mr. Nice Guy. Um, I have been pushed and hassled by a number of video commenters. Some people might call them trolls. Um, these are the ones who strongly disagree with what I say and what I put in comments, and they resort to personal insults. Um, this happens. This happened an awful lot on the video I made about 9-11, and how I used to believe the conspiracy theorists, which went along the lines of 9-11 was an inside job, but when I spent more time looking at the counter-argument and looking into the um, official side, the official explanation, the NIST report, etc., um, those seem to be, to me, to be more plausible. Um, in between 2001 and now, uh, I have, in my spare time, you know, read an awful lot of science books, popular science books, and learnt an awful lot about physics and astronomy. And that is useful, I think, because it helps you to um, work out whether particular claims about the physics of what happened on 9-11 are possible or not. And the main argument which uh, the so-called truthers keep making is that um, what we saw happen, what we've been told happened, i.e. planes flying into Twin Towers and then those towers collapsing, uh, is physically not possible without some kind of explosives or um, radio-controlled, remote-controlled planes, or th there's a whole load of different theories and ideas about how the official version is wrong. Um, I might as well say here that I still don't know exactly what happened. I never claimed that I know the definitive version of events. But I am highly sceptical and continue to be so. I've not been persuaded by these commenters. Um, I'm still highly sceptical of the claims made by the conspiracy theorists. By that I mean the people who say that 9-11 was an inside job and not the result of 19 hijackers hijacking four planes and, and doing what we saw happened um so yeah no more no more mr nice guy um doesn't necessarily relate to that but that's just uh what is likely to happen at some point where i begin to lose the plot and have a go at some of these people who i would say are idiots um moving on uh Dehumanizing one's enemies. Um, I I did already make a video about uh, trolls, quite a brief video, which a lot of people disagreed with, uh, which they're welcome to do. Um, it's something I might come back to, and the, the the concept, the idea of dehumanizing the enemies, is something which has been used uh, by totalitarian states historically. Um, and by other people, and to me it's kind of chilling and alarming when people now uh, make 
comments along the lines of, oh, so-and-so is subhuman. Um, you know, they're more than an idiot, they're not even a, a, a human being. I think that's a, a dangerous idea, a dangerous road to go down. Um, so, yeah, dehumanising one's enemies, that might be something someone else wants to pick up on. Um, changing subject completely, another question. Uh, this is a really is a rhetorical question. Um, and it's, why do LEDs flicker? Um, Light-emitting diodes. Um, as far as I'm aware, they have been in existence since the 1960s or 1970s. Um, and it is a way of getting light from a diode which emits light. Diode being a small um, electrical component. I'm just looking at the camera here. I have a funny feeling my memory might be filling up. Um, so, and the thing about LEDs is it's a very efficient way of turning electricity into light. Um, they don't get hot and they last a very long time. So some new light bulbs are LEDs, um, as opposed to something with tungsten filaments that get hot and turn a lot of the energy into heat. Um, anyway, LEDs, um, I've noticed, uh, especially when you're driving at night and you are behind uh, either something like a Toyota Prius, some BMWs and modern buses. A lot of those for the rear lights they have LEDs not light bulbs. And when you move your eyes, when you look rapidly from one side to the other, um, instead of seeing a stream of light, um, you know if, if, if you look at the sun or if you rapidly look from one side to the other, you will burn a, an image of the sun, like a line, which is a continuous line from one side of your vision to another. When you do the same thing with an LED, it's uh, it's like a, a series of dots. So, for some reason, LEDs flicker. Um, and I've never found the answer to why they do this. And obviously, if you have a light plugged into um, the mains, where you have alternating current, that alternates 50 or 60 times every second, you would expect it to flicker. Um, but when something runs off a battery in a vehicle, a car or a bus, I don't understand why they flicker. So, that's a rhetorical question. There is something else which is related to uh, the LED question, and that is the um, remote controls that we use, the infrared remote controls that we use to turn our televisions on and off. Um, we can't see the infrared light that comes out at the end of these things, but if you take one um, and you have a digital camera or a digital video camera um, and point it at the thing and then look into the viewfinder or the screen, you will see that it glows, which means that uh, digital cameras convert infrared light into visible light. Um, and that's something which um, I think is interesting. I don't really understand the mechanics behind that, why they pick up on this infrared light. Um, but it's something I would like to explore, and I would show you if I had one of these things, but I don't have it now. Um, gonna stop there for this uh, part of the video, and um, if you're still interested, see you in part five.